As we continue on our path of studying the centers of triangles, we get to the centroid, which always sounds like some kind of science fiction movie to me. But the centroid simply is the intersection of the medians of a triangle. And notice I put this triangle on a coordinate plane. That's going to become clear why I did that in a moment. But let's first understand what a median is. So here I have H. H happens to be the midpoint. We can make it really clear that it's a midpoint here of one side of the triangle. If I extend the line segment from that midpoint to the opposite vertex, that's what we call the median. So here's one median, and we're going to measure some angles, and I'll show you why in a second. There's a second, and there's a third. I want to be very clear, though. The median is simply the line segment that connects the vertex to this midpoint of the opposite side. It does not necessarily bisect any kind of angle. As you can see here, the measurement here is approximately 28. The measurement here, 44. It's definitely not bisecting the angle. However, it definitely is bisecting the side. So that's the median. The point at which all of these medians intersect is called the centroid. And the centroid has a lot of different properties. The first property is that it actually cuts the median into two segments that are in a certain ratio. And the ratio can become clear if we find some friendlier numbers. Here's one. So here you see BK is three. So from the, this vertex to the centroid, it's three. And then from the centroid out to the midpoint, it's one and a half. And it's not a coincidence here, but it actually does cut this segment into a segment that's two thirds of the total length and then a smaller segment that's one third. Or in other words, the larger segment is going to be twice the smaller segment. And we could look at each median, and this would still be true. We could move this around, and it would still be true. Here we go. There's two, one, so it's double. Or in other words, this is two-thirds the total, which is the length of three. And this is one-third of the total, which is one out of three. The next property of the centroid is that the coordinates of the centroid happen to be the average of the coordinates of the vertices. So if we can get some friendly numbers here, here's pseudo-friendly numbers. See how the x-coordinates of all the vertices are 8, 0, and 10? Well, if you add them all up, you get 18, and divide that by 3, and you get 6. And notice that the x-coordinate of the centroid is 6. And you can do the same thing with the y's. 4 plus 0 plus 0 is 4. Divide that by 3, you get 1 and a third, which, are the y which is the y-coordinate. So the coordinates of the centroid are the average coordinates of the vertices. The final detail about the centroid is that it is the balance point of the triangle. If you were to take this triangle, cut it out of a piece of paper, and try and balance it on your fingertip, you would have to find out where the centroid was because that would be the point where it would balance. Otherwise, it would just tip over. So to recap about the centroid, first thing is that it's the concurrency of the medians of a triangle. Second, always lies within the triangle regardless of if it's a cute triangle, obtuse triangle, or a right triangle. The next is that it splits the median into two segments that are, that are in a particular ratio, which happens to be a two-thirds, one-third. Or in other words, the longer segment is going to be twice the smaller segment in terms of length. And then the final property is that the coordinates of the centroid are the average of the x and y coordinates of each of the vertices which makes it the balance point of the triangle.